Well, good morning and welcome. And as I always say, it's nice to be home. I always feel when I walk in here like I'm coming home. So I, I thank you very much. I have to smile. I, I was telling Roberta this morning, you have an organized pastor. I have a notebook with notes, with pages that are in plastic sleeves, with everything over there and everything over here. So she will think that I will know what to do, but you know me better. So anyway, just to uh, let you know that there is no Bible study until July 10th. Pastor is on vacation, and also uh, if, if there are any pastoral needs, you have Donna Rutten, and you've got the, the number there. Next Sunday, you have a special congregational meeting, and you're going to determine whether or not you're going to move into the Cranberry Hymnal. As we were talking about, I remember when we move from the red hymnal to the green hymnal. Some of you are nodding, you know that. But if you knew Helen Hankey, she was saying, if you think that's bad, you should have seen when we moved from the black to the red. I didn't know that there was a black one beforehand, so that would <laughs> These, uh, The summer campfire worship, the second Wednesday of the month in July and August, there's a campfire worship. Pastor Katie will bring a guitar, and of course there's gonna be s'mores. So s'mores are always the attraction. And our June outreach will be the Luther Park Bible Camp. And you are to designate your gift to this organization. If you write a check, you put LPBC on it, and you can put it in the offering or in the red bucket there. You can uh, leave your donation there. Are there any other announcements? If not, then please stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live you the newness of life, the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our gathering hymn, no, a hymn is in the blue hymnal, number 781. My life flows on in endless song.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over lands and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength pilot us, by your power preserve us, by your wisdom instruct us, and by your hand protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading this morning is from Job in the Old Testament, chapter 38, 1 through 11. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determines its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? 
When I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no further, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The uh, psalm for today is Psalm 107 and page 267. And we'll read responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Oh, so we go one through three and then skip to uh, 23 to 32. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim. He gathered them out of the lands. Okay, 23. Some went down to the sea in ships. They beheld the works of the Lord. Then he spoke, and a stormy wind arose. They mounted up to the heavens and fell back to the depths. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he, them from their he stilled the storm to a whisper. And quieted the waves of the sea. Then they were glad because of the calm. And he brought them into the harbor and gave them Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people. Okay, here ends the psalm. The uh, second reading is the letter to the Corinthians, chapter 6, 1 through 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain, for he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault that may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our afflictions, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. Here ends the second reading. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel.
The Gospel for this Sunday is found in the fourth chapter of Mark, beginning with the 35th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, when the evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose, and the waves beat upon the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. And please be seated. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When I was in high school, I sang in the concert choir. I remember that as a junior, the choir had to sing during the graduation ceremony. The song that was chosen You'll Never Walk Alone, from the musical Carousel. As we began singing, I noticed that some of the seniors had stopped singing and started crying. I couldn't figure out what the big deal was. After all, it was just a song. The next year when I graduated and we chose the same song to be sung, I understood why those seniors were crying. That night was the last time that our class would ever be together as a whole. We would be going our separate ways after graduation. I heard the words, when you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sigh and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain for your dreams be tossed and blown. It was a mixture of emotions, excitement that I was done with public school and uneasiness that I would be making my own choices. Hearing my parents' advice but making my own decisions and experiencing the consequences that came with them. That was where my childhood ended and adulthood began. While I was glad that I was done with school, I also thought about the fact that being in school was predictable, safe. I was familiar with what I was leaving, but had no idea what it would be like where I was going. I was moving into the unknown. A storm was brewing and I had never felt so alone. How then did we respond to those storms in our lives? When I was a boy, my mother would take the curlers and bobby pins out of her hair during a thunderstorm, even though she was sitting on the couch in the front room, because the curlers and pins had metal in them and she worried about lightning. And for those of you who don't understand what I was talking about, talk to your grandmothers. (laughs) They know. Today, however, I am talking about a different kind of storm, the kind of storm that disrupts our lives and jars our thinking those big, life-impacting, stress-incurring storms that need to be addressed. As I did an online search on how we respond, I found some information from the Harvard Medical School, and this is what they wrote. A stressful situation can trigger a cascade of stress hormones that produced well-orchestrated physiological changes. A stressful incident can make the heart pound and breathing quicken, muscles tense and beads of sweat appear. And the authors continued, This combination of reaction to stress is known as the fight or flight response because it evolved as a survival mechanism, enabling people and other mammals to react quickly to life-threatening situations. The carefully orchestrated yet near instantaneous sequence of hormonal changes and physiological responses helps someone to fight the threat off or to flee to safety. So now that we know why we react the way we do, what should we do next? The information about the next steps that I found on the internet was repeated on multiple sites. The various authors told us to engage in the problem solving process, which as they detail is this, discovering the problem, deciding to tackle the issue, seeking to understand the problem more fully, researching available options or solutions, and taking actions to resolve the issue. They outline a logical path for us to take, but have they forgotten another important step? 
Our gospel lesson for today gives us insight into where we should turn when there are storms in our lives. Mark tells us about Jesus and the disciples together. He had been teaching them and others using parables to explain his message. When he was in private with his disciples, he took, the, he took them to carefully explain the parables he had used. After that, it was decided that they should cross the lake. And as they did, a great storm came up and the waves were large and crashed against the boat that was already being swamped. Seeing this, the disciples were frightened and looked for Jesus, who was asleep. They woke him and asked him why he wasn't doing anything to save them. As Mark wrote, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. The wind stopped and the sea grew calm. Jesus said, said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? There is the step that is missing in the problem solving process, turning to God when we are in a storm. As we hear in Psalm 142, I pour out my complaint before him. Before him, I tell my trouble. God wants to hear from us. When we are experiencing these storms in our life, when we feel the need to fight or flee, that is the time when we need to turn to him in prayer. At the time when we want to fold into ourselves, when we put up our defenses against the world, that is when we need to pray. How often throughout the Bible are we not reminded about the importance of prayers when we are experiencing a storm? We hear these words from Peter, Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. In 2 Timothy, Paul wrote, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And in his letter to the church in Philippi, he wrote, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. One of the readings often chosen to be read at funerals, a time when we face the reality of death, is when we turn to the words of the 23rd Psalm. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Time and time again, Jesus reminds us about the importance of prayer. Therefore I tell you, Jesus said, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Listen to these words from Gabby Santiago, showing the importance of belief in prayer. Prayer is a solution to our problems because it has the power to shift our circumstances when we pray with faith. Many times I've found myself praying to God to turn a situation around or to transform someone's life, but can I be honest? I may not always believe the situation will get better or that the person I'm praying for will change. I found myself praying out of obligation because I know that's what I'm supposed to do. Santiago added, I've learned that it's not enough to pray. We need to believe in our prayers. Doubt will always arise, so we need to be ready and to stand firm in faith and believe that God is able to answer our prayers. When we remember the God who answers our prayers, no fear can quench our faith. Jesus tells us clearly that when we pray, we believe we have received it and it will be ours. How many times throughout the Bible do we not hear people cry out only to have God respond? Think about the story of the Israelites leaving Egypt. As they were being pursued by the Egyptians, they came to the Red Sea and stopped. And this is how it was captured in the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israel Israelites looked back and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. We know how the story continues. Moses stretches out his hand and the waters part, allowing the Israelites to walk on dry land. Once they reached the other shore, Moses stretched out his hands and the waters closed, drowning the Egyptians. And how many times during his ministry did Jesus not respond to those who reached out to him? 
Matthew recorded one encounter. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith will it be done to you. And their sight was restored. As Gabby Santiago wrote, we only have to believe. When we are experiencing a storm in our lives, when that fight or flight feeling arises, that is when we must turn to God in prayer and believe that he has heard our prayers. We must also understand that God doesn't always give us what we want. He gives us what we need, which may be different. I have a plaque that I had in my office which reads, Sometimes God calms the storm. Sometimes he lets the storm rage and calms his child. We need to remember that we are going through a difficult period, just like the words from footprints in the sand tell us, when we see that single set of footprints, that was when we were being carried. I close today with the words from the song we heard at our graduation. Walk on. Walk on with hope in your hearts and you'll never be alone. You'll never walk alone. We are never alone. Remember what Jesus told us. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Please stand as you are able then as we sing our hymn of the day, number 731 in the Blue Hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you know that there are times when we will go through storms in our lives. So often we turn, we turn from you and try to protect ourselves by building barriers. Create in us believing hearts, O oh God. Strengthen us when we turn away. Take down those barriers that we may seek you in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Your Creator God, we thank you for the wonderful world in which we live. However, we are not the stewards that we should be. We do not care for your creation as we should. Help us to see the magnitude of the gift that you have given us. Lord, in your mercy. Your Governing God, we ask that you guide our leaders worldwide, nationally, and locally. 
Help them to move from a focus on power to one of service. Give them the wisdom they will need to make decisions that will benefit all, moving past divisiveness into common ground. Lord, in your mercy. Unifying God, we ask that you still the hearts of those who improperly seek division and judge others based on their individuality. Clear their vision so that they can say Jesus and others. Lord, in your mercy. Healing Father, we ask that you be with those who are suffering in body, mind, and spirit. We especially remember those whom we name in our hearts. Be with them, Lord, giving them the strength and hope they need. Bless those who care for them, the doctors, the nurses, the caregivers, and loving family members. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Lord, we remember those who have gone before us. Continue to be with us on our path until the time in which we will join them and live with you and your Son through eternity. Lord, in your mercy. We pray this in the name of the Father, who lives and reigns with the Son and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with your neighbor and then. Please stand as you are able as the offering is brought forth. Let us pray our offertory prayer as found on page 35. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him 
who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And receive this benediction. May the Lord be within you to strengthen you, outside of you to keep you, above you to protect you, beneath you to uphold you, in front of you to direct you, behind you to keep you from straying, and round about you to keep you safe. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Our sending hymn is in the green hymnal, number 559. Oh, for a thousand tongues. <laughs>